Next, Marilyn Hickey gives insight into how believers can understand the signs in the heavens. Well, I'm holding in my hand a book entitled Signs in the Heavens. And the scriptures tell us, especially in the last days, there'll be signs and wonders. And today, we t there are people that are involved in astronomy and those that are involved in astrology. We're going to find out what the difference is. Is it right or wrong? Does the scriptures say anything about it? And here to tell us more on this subject is the author of this book, well, our beloved Marilyn Hickey. Let's welcome her to the program. You look quite lovely. Thank you. Hi, Johnny. I love that outfit, that cape. You look like Superwoman. Indonesia. 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 A gift. I love it. They awesome. felt led to give it to me. I felt led to receive it. <laughs> I like that. You got to learn how to be a receiver sometimes <laughs> right. as well. Marilyn Hickey, yes. I'm not going to ask your age because the gentleman never asked a lady Please. that. Please. But how long have you been in ministry? Oh, my goodness. I've been in ministry probably 58 years. I'm 84 and That's a half. That's how old I am is 58. You've been in ministry ever since I've been alive. Right. That's a long time. Yeah. And she's 84. Can you believe that? I mean, she doesn't mind yeah. sounding good. Doesn't look like it, act like it, talk like it. <laughs> wow. How do you... Uh, of course, I know it's the goodness of the Lord, but do you have any secrets for us how we can live to be 84 and still be so vibrant? I know you travel the world Oh, yeah, well. all the time. Well, basically, you know, uh, I took Jehovah Rapha, which is the Lord our healer, but it also means health. So the Lord is my health. So I take that and confess that and speak that promise. And I try to do sensible things. <clears throat> you know, I drink water, do all those kind of things. And this disgusting thing called exercise, you know, oh. the best part of it is when it's uh -huh. over. Ugh. <laughs> those help. And plus, I memorize scripture, and that's number one. So what does the doctor say about you when he does an examination? Well, he just says you're better than last year. <laughs> Amazing. I know. Well, I know we want to talk about your book because it's going to be a very interesting subject. Those of you especially that have heard pe people talk about astrology. I know growing up, I was always so fascinated with that. And then I learned that being, being involved in astrology and the signs and all that stuff uh, was not a good thing. Yeah. So we're going to talk about that. But before you tell us about the book, tell us about some of your latest crusades and what's coming up even, some of the miraculous stories. Well, that thank have you. You know, we were in Tibet. I think this is the biggest miracle I've ever had. I've been in 132 countries, but never had God use me to shake a whole country. And we took 104 people because we take big teams on trips twice a year. And Tibet, you know, the Chinese have taken over Tibet. So they've been pretty cruel to the Buddhist. And so they told us, you cannot do anything. You can't pass out tracks. You can't do anything. So we did prayer walking. But one of the men brought four New Testaments in their language. So the guide I had, you know, we had different guides. He said to me, can you tell me anything about Jesus? <laughs> well, as a Pope a Catholic, yes. And so I said, yes, I can. And I have a New Testament in your language. And he said, I want it. I said, in fact, we have four. We smuggled them in. And so he took the one and went to the head lama. And the head lama said, have her come to me. And so we presented the head lama, the other three New Testaments. And he started a Bible study with all the monks in Tibet. <laughs> How amazing. Oh, yeah. Buddhist monks studying the Bible. Yes, yes. Now, talking about signs in the heavens, that's a sign right. of the end times right. because Jesus himself said, when the gospel is preached in all the world and Tibet is <coughs> part of the world, right. so right. that had to happen for Christ to be able to come back in our right. time. That's true. Right. You know That's what true. I love about that story? And Marilyn has so many other stories about the Middle East and doors that are opening, is that 
you don't try to go in and be politically correct. You let mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit lead you and guide you. And Jesus is able to reveal himself to people. And he just will open doors. So, so many right. times you think, oh, well, you know, why would she even be in a situation like that? Or, you know, why would she even be talking to a Buddhist monk or whatever? But isn't it amazing how God opens those doors and Jesus can slip right in and reveal himself just like he does? It's the miraculous. And we didn't get in any trouble, you know. We had those four Bibles, but we left something that will change a nation. Because when you get all of the monks studying under the number one Lama, you know, the Dalai Lama has been thrown out, but there's another Lama. And so we presented them to him. I have pictures of that. It's awesome. I'm just glad I didn't have to get on Daystar and say, folks, pray. <laughs> Marilyn Hickey's in a prison in Tibet. We need to get her out. <laughs> but the Lord has been with you so many times. Yes. So what about this book, Signs in the Heavens? Is it wrong for people to have horoscopes and study their signs under the stars in that fashion? Yes, it is because the constellations don't tell your story. The constellations tell his story. And that's why the enemy would throw that in. That's junk, you know? And so people get up every morning, read their horoscope, you know? And th those, hor those things don't tell the truth. That's the devil's lie. So I was in Jerusalem. This is how this book started. And I went to see the Chagall windows at the Hadassah Hospital. They're very famous. And so here are these beautiful windows, and they had the 12 tribes like, you know, a horoscope type of thing, you know, constellations. So I said to the guide, surely the Jewish people don't believe in the horoscope. Oh, no. He said, this shows the 12 tribes. These constellations show the 12 tribes. And so I said, are you sure this is right? So he took me to an old synagogue where the mosaics showed these 12 signs as the 12 tribes. So that really provoked me. I thought, God has something better for us, and the enemy brings a counterfeit. So I went home and began to study the book of Job. And Job is considered the oldest book of all. So as I'm going through this book, I'm seeing that he names two of these uh, constellations, Arcturus and Pleiades. And so I'm thinking, how did Job know anything? I mean, he talks about a redeemer. He talks about a, a mediator. He talks about <laughs> being on the earth and a resurrection. Wow. All these things he talks about. But how did he name stars? So I began to study the constellations. And really, they tell the story of Jesus and they tell it piece by piece. For example, the first one is Virgo. Well, that's virgin. And always each constellation has four figures in it. And so in the book, I show that. But then they have certain stars in it, and the stars have names, like Spica, this big star in this woman that you see there. It means the seed of the woman. Then it shows a woman holding a baby. Then it shows the good shepherd. It has a crown. Wow. It has a cross. And, you know, this is really the story of salvation. So I began to look at these and see how each one unfolds Jesus. So when you look at the first four, it's really the story of Jesus. But then when you look at the next four, you see how Jesus came for us and what he did. And it shows how we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. It shows who he is inside us. So let's talk about some of those, those other four, if you would. I know we'll put yeah, up I like on the screen. Those pictures. We talked about Virgo. Which other one can we talk about real quick? Okay, this is what I'd like to do. Because okay. in the book, I have a summary, you know, at the end that tells each one and just kind of what it is. So when we see Virgo, we see the Redeemer. And so, you know, we see some beautiful things here in Libra where he paid the price to save us from sin, and it has scales, and it has the weighing on it. 
and one of the star's names is the price that covers. So we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. We don't weigh out well, but he does. He's perfect. So each of this begins to tell us, and on the scales, one side it says a star that says the price that is deficient. And on the other side, it says, you know, the star that covers. And so all of these, like Scorpio, you will see a scorpion, and then you will see the heel of the shepherd stepping on the scorpion, you know, and how Jesus was bruised, said he would bruise his heel. So it just starts unfolding the things that we know. Now, this is what encourages me, that how did the ancients know the gospel? How did they know? How long has Old Testament been written? How long has New Testament been written? And how did they know it? And it says, the heavens declare his glory. Yes. And so the heavens unfold the story of Jesus Christ. And he created the stars. He named the stars. He does. He and calls them by name. And so it would just make sense because the enemy always counterfeits everything that God does. He has no original idea. Right. So God created these constellations and then man took what God intended to point people to the Messiah and used it, if you will, as horoscopes. Astrology. It's satanic. It's, it's satanic. satanic. It yeah. really is. Yeah. Wow. Talk about a couple more, if you will, because this is so interesting. Okay. I like to look at these first ones. And Sagittarius, here is an archer, you know, and it shows Jesus as the Son of God. And then it shows the bride, the church. And so you begin to see, you know, and you're seeing these figures on the screen. I'm so glad. And you see how each figure that you see up there is telling more, more of the story of Jesus. So what about the horse and the man and the, the bow and arrow there, okay. the Sagittarius? That's Jesus, the conqueror. Amazing. He's the conqueror. And, and, and we have a lot of these images that we hear in Revelation, don't we? These oh, yes. different distorted creatures, etc. cetera. Yes. So it's not unusual that it was used. No. And this is something that really encourages me. John 1, 9, you know, he says, the light that lightens every man who is born into the world. Now, the whole world is to know the gospel, but how? I mean, you know, I go a lot to Muslim countries. How can they know the gospel? How can people maybe who never had a track, never had someone tell them, never seen a television program, and yet he says everyone gets an opportunity. And Titus 3, 2 says that too. You know, that the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. You know, so, you know, we see Muslims having dreams and so on, but also the stars are set to tell the story of Jesus Christ. And, you know, even the wise men followed a star. Where did it lead them? It didn't lead them to a horoscope. It led them to Jesus. So Marilyn, what have people commented when they've read this book? Because I know they're just like blown away. I've never heard anybody talk about this from a Christian perspective. What is people's response? Well, I like to give it to people who read horoscopes. <laughs> and sometimes people will get saved. So wow. I like to do that. I use it that way. But also it's very interesting to people just to see how Jesus wants to tell his story again and again in every possible way. It even says in Romans 1 that nature tells the story. So to me, God is d doing everything to reveal Jesus to people. And so some way he's going to get to everyone. And I encourage people to get two or three of these because they're missionaries. You know, I say this about books, they work while you sleep. Yes. <laughs> you know? And they can go places that you can't go or won't go. That's right. Uh, you know, you think about this, uh, we talk about creationism, and there's another term called intelligent design. And when you see there's a design, it says to you, whether you believe in God or not, there must be a designer. 
And when God has so intricately made the heavens and the earth, and he put the stars in place, and as Marilyn said, he's named them, and there's the design of how these constellations and what they represent, and they tell the story of the gospel. We shouldn't be surprised because that's how great our God is. He said, I will work, and who shall let it? He knows all things, and he's done this from the dawn of creation. So what do you think people will take from this book after they get it and read it? They will be shocked at how much redemption is shown here because it shows Jesus coming back, it shows the church coming with him, and it shows the church ruling and reigning with him. I mean, it's the whole picture. So I think, you know, we get the gospel in a lot of ways. We read the Bible, we watch television, but to see that God just looking for every opportunity, he can get Jesus into your heart and make him real to you, and that you see the provisions. Like when I see he's my righteousness, you know, I told someone today, sometimes I don't feel very righteous. You know, I want to slap some people. You've had some hard <laughs> crises. But when I say I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, it calms me down. This is who Jesus is in me. And so it's just another beautiful way of seeing who Jesus is in me and who I am in him and how the whole picture, can you imagine? It takes us through Revelation. We're going to come back. We're going to rule and reign with him. And it shows it pictured. And I like this. We remember better in pictures than we yes. do in words. So true. Well, I want to tell you about three opportunities. One is to get the book, Signs in the Heavens. And I like what Marilyn said. Get two, three copies. Give it to some friends, especially if you know they're into horoscopes and astrology. Number two, I want to tell you that if you're in the Denver area, go by and visit Orchard Road Christian Center right there on the freeway there in the South Denver area. You'll be blessed by that great church that Marilyn is the pastor emeritus of. Her and her husband Wallace founded that church many years ago. And a third opportunity is you can watch Marilyn and Sarah daily here on Daystar, 9.30 a.m. and 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Monday through Friday. Well, Marilyn, you're always a delight. You're always you. smiling. <laughs> you're always vibrant. You're always glorifying God, wow. and that's an inspiration to me. Yes. It really, really is. So I thank God for Marilyn Hickey and the blessing that she is to all of us. In just a few moments, Pastor Rod Parsley will be coming to talk about his new book that's about the resurrection. It's aptly titled Gone, because he's no longer in that tomb. He is risen, risen indeed at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for you and me. He's going to be joined by his daughter, Ashton, and you're going to love hearing from both of them today. But what can we pray with you about? What's happening in your life? Has today started off bad? Has this week been bad? Has this uh, month, this year been bad? Do you need God to divinely intervene in your life in some area? maybe your marriage or your family, perhaps your health or your finances, we would love to pray with you. And when you call that number on the screen, your name won't be placed on a mailing list, so you won't be solicited in any way. We pay for the prayer partners. We pay for the phone call because we love you and because God loves you. So we can pray with you in any way. Or if you're high tech like Joni, Go to daystar.com and click on prayer and send your prayer request electronically. And I hope you're still praying for me. I want to get over quickly the sickness that's attacked me. I don't like being sick. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Mm -hmm. But it does make me have more compassion for those of you that are sick when I do go through it. And my grandmas, I hope you're praying for me. That's not just some cute little thing. I mean it. I really need you to do that. 